vision for the school is that students that come from St. John Fenton will, first of all, be followers of Jesus Christ, second of all, will be good citizens, and third, they'll be successful in academics. You're listening to the Thoroughbred Podcast, an elite business leadership podcast. All right, welcome everybody. Uh, I am just like, wow. We've got a room full of people. I'm super excited for that. And uh, I'm also excited because we're going to be talking about leadership. We have with us the principal of St. John's Catholic School, Mr. Andrew Schmidt. Welcome, brother man. Thank you very much for having me. Great to see you. I'm going to just pull you in here because that's the (laughs) camera right there. And I know you want to make sure you look at that camera, even though this is a podcast. It's getting recorded. Uh, We have Michelle Pignani, who is, tell us your role, PSA president. Yeah, Parent School Association president and parent volunteer. Awesome, and we thank you for all of the things that all of you do. And we also have who did not know, well, none of them knew they were going to be on a podcast. Um, Miss Lisa, I didn't even know was coming, so she's in the most trouble. So tell us your name and what the heck you do. Sure. Um, Lisa Palmer, um, board member of the Education Foundation, parent of a fifth grader, and active volunteer. And I um, really focus on helping with the marketing at the school. Awesome. So I am John Wentworth. This is a Thoroughbred podcast. We are talking about leadership, right? Um, A Thoroughbred, and you probably don't know this other than you know that I love them. uh, The definition of the Thoroughbred, the secondary definition is an elite business leader. And uh, school is a business. Life is a business. Pretty much everything we do ties to a business. And uh, we've got the principal with us. We've got three leaders, volunteers, and myself. I am a father um, at St. John's as well. And actually Christian is an alumni of St. John's. So we've run in the gambit here. So let's just jump right in. And these guys have no clue that we're going to do this. They came here to talk about marketing our school. Um, (laughs) But let's talk a little bit about that. Like, and we're going to get into that right afterwards. But what what was kind of your idea today as we came into this? And and you don't have to go too deep into the weeds, but 30,000 feet, what was the thought like, okay, today, what, what are we focused on trying to do to uh, create awareness and, you know, whatever that might be? We're just trying to get the message out to the community we're trying to get the message in particular to our parish about the how great the school that is on the 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 parish campus how great the wonderful things that are happening at the school um since i got here in march the push was to my, my focus was to help the parish help the community see those good things because I don't think we hear about the good things enough. So coming today, because we think the Wentworth Group does a fantastic job with marketing, with promotion. We 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 market a lot of churches. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, marketing's marketing. I so, mean, <laughs> so our, so the whole the whole goal of today was to just come and pick your brain and see what what more we could be doing to get those good things out to the community. Well, so first I want to say this, right? Because come over here because you're back to the camera. Um, but, but first I want to say this is that I applaud you for doing that because I do that inside of my industry. All I eat, sleep and breathe real estate and leadership. So I go out to people that aren't in it at all and say, Hey, what do you think of our brand? What do you think of what we're doing? They're like, why are you asking me? I don't know anything about it. I'm like, that's why I'm asking you. Right. So I think it's important to do that. I, Look, if we're going to market to an audience, we have to know who the audience is and we have to know what their perception is, not what right. we think, because what right. we think doesn't matter. Um, so I think that's that's awesome. Um, and you, by the way, Andrew's been principal since what date? I became the interim March, middle of March. Middle of March. Middle of March. The date right now. Of 2019. That's all right. And then, and then I became the full-time on May 4th. So first year principal, yep. essentially. Yep. Awesome. All right. So, and we'll talk about, let's just talk about some marketing and, and we don't, again, we don't have to get too deep into the weeds, but what are some of the things that we want to share, right? Besides the fact that the school is great. Um, for me, I look at our school and I'm sitting there today and, you know, today we had uh, the celebration of veterans day and we have all of the veterans in. And for the first time we sang the national anthem, which I thought was awesome, awesome. you know? And great. so I think it's just being mindful of those little things that move the needle just a little bit more, right? Okay. Okay, yes, the children got to invite their grandparents there, and that's great. Well, and the excuse me, and the veterans. Um, we do Grandparents Day as well, but the veterans, right. and that's awesome. But that little extra piece of doing the anthem, I thought was was just a great touch, right? Because right, right, I mean, right. the mass doesn't change. The mass is the mass. It's not right. like we're going to go into an hour talk about the veterans. So, but that was a great way to honor them. 
Well, Absolutely. and I think there's a lot of magic, and there's a lot of magic in those moments. Um, I think that they're they're planned behind the scenes, but they're magical moments because for most people they're unexpected moments. Like, why would we sing the national anthem at the end of a mass? I mean, you know, I think that those that for me, you know, I've done a lot of marketing in business, um, and and I think that I'm trying to help and carry that my skills into the school and really capture those magical moments and help tell the story because I think that one thing that I have told Andrew from the very beginning of him coming and having been in the school for eight years is there's always been magic and there's always been wonderful stories and these teachers are amazing and always you know doing things in the classroom but we've never shared the story we've mm-hmm. never shared it to the community and how does the community know what a special place that St. John School is if you don't share the story so so, so that's a great point and just come a little closer to me not not I know I just because because I need you to, I want you to be heard, right? But that's a great point. So I always say to our agents and I say to this people in general, like if you're the greatest realtor in the world and nobody knows it, then you're not worth a darn, right? right? And that's what marketing is. It's bringing awareness. You know, if you sold, why do we talk about sales? And this isn't about me, but it's it's just a parallel. If, if we sell 500 homes and nobody knows it, then we didn't sell any. Mm-hmm. And it's the same thing. If you've got you a great school, the good word. you've got to let people know. And that's marketing. If you've got a great school and there's great things happening. And trust me, I've seen the great things. Right. You know, um, change takes time. Mm-hmm. I mean, you can't just walk in and crack a whip Absolutely. because you get no buy in like that. Mm-hmm. So really, you know, leadership takes and leadership in change takes time. It's not easy to do. Um, but you just got to stay consistent in, in what your vision is. Um, so what is your vision for our school? <laughs> That's right. Pull that mic, brother. I'm being interviewed again. <laughs> Vision for the school is that students that come from St. John Fenton will, first of all, be followers of Jesus Christ. Second of all, will be good citizens. And third, they'll be successful in academics. So I, And I, I layered in that yeah, way because we need... Mm-hmm. We're a Catholic school, and we're not going to hide behind anything. So you, Jesus is front and center in, in all we do. hundred percent. And I love that you went down that path, right? Um, you know, I was thinking again about that today, knowing we we're going to have this meeting, not even knowing we were going to do this podcast. In fact, while I was in Mass, I te- what time did I text you, Christian, that we're doing a podcast? <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> right. Because I just, it was just kind of on my heart. Like, okay, I know what's going on. We, for us to go in a closed room and talk about it again, what good is it going to do us, mm-hmm. right? Um, and so when we talk about Jesus first, you know, one of the things I, I thought about, like, I grew up with no religion in my household, zero. Like, I went to church probably, I don't know, I'm not even going to guess, not a lot. And it was always with a grandparent that made me go, and I kicked and screamed the whole way there, right? And then I met Jesus six years ago, and now I have a, I'm not a perfect Christian, never going to be, haven't met one. Um, don't strive to be a perfect anything. Uh, but but having that relationship with Jesus and, and looking back, right, and going, gosh, I just wish I had that in my life when I was a child, when I really needed it most. And so Christian transferred, uh, what grade, Christian? Sixth? After a seventh grade year uh, from a public school into St. John's. And then obviously Rocco and Dally, who are nine and 10, coming up in St. John's. And I've been in other schools and they do a great job. Um, but to me, when I walk down those hallways, this is missing. Yeah. That cross. And you can feel it. When you walk you, school. you yeah. feel every single bit of it and it's contagious. A hundred percent. And and so that's what, you know. Um, People come and go in all walks of life, right? In our business, agents will come and go. Uh, clients, clients, and when I say come and go, they might choose someone else, and I'm okay with that because mm-hmm. I know where I'm at. I know who I am. I know mm-hmm. who I'm not. I know the foundation, but I know that I'm not leaving because of that. Through whatever exists, there's been some change, right? You've you've come in to, to make some change to take us, I think, to the next level, and and I think it's really important that People leave, and it's okay, mm-hmm. right? And it's hard to swallow sometimes, and it's okay that they make that choice as well. And mm-hmm. I think there's there's nothing wrong with that. For me, the foundation of faith is what keeps me there regardless of what's happening. Um, so, how, so how do you feel about and, – and look, I don't want to get into this school, that school. They're all yeah. great. Right. Well, that, that's that's one of the challenges in this area is we have great public schools in the area. Yeah. And so 
we have to get out there and 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 yeah, they're doing great and wonderful things, and and their academics are, are right up there with anyone, uh, you know, in the county. But St. John, we're we got a presence too, and 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 great things are happening in middle school. Great things are happening in our elementary program, and in and, and in our early childhood. So. For- for sure. I, I always look at it like, well, I mean, I barely graduated high school, so I'm not really worried about the education part so much because it's going to be 50 times better than what I had. It's the faith. It's I, the I faith. mean, really, it's the faith in the community. So what, yeah, what sets us apart? It's the faith. The and, faith. And that, and that is important. It has to be important. And we have to understand that as parents, as we send our kids to the school, that they're going to get that faith. And then what they do with that faith mm-hmm. is important. So like, right. so Catholic Schools Week is awesome because that it's a national wide let's celebrate your catholic school for a whole week end of january and so every day there is a different focus so monday was focus on your community so we had community service and and watching all of our little kids do things for um the warming center the the catholic charities in flint they were all doing things that they need in service to the homeless in flint and in and, and we had the director of catholic charities Vicki Schultz come yeah. down and she spoke to the kids and, and my third grader, Addison, she remembered why they were doing it. So mm-hmm. that was impactful. And th- those are those type of things that it's good to do service, but we do service because we love, we love because right. Christ loved us. And yeah. so I know I'm just, I'm kind of rambling. No, I think I it's I'm, great. I think, I think actions are one thing, but the motive behind your actions is what's really right. important. You know, sometimes the unseen uh, is what's most important, right? Uh, this morning, actually, I was, I was reading Matthew, you know, talking to um, Matthew six, talking about, you know, don't go into the streets and preach and, and, and praying in, in your in your space um, to not be a hypocrite. And, but the bottom, the, or the final sentence you know, you could read the first sentence and stop, but then you, when you read to the final sentence, to me, that's the message. And I can't remember the darn thing right now because <laughs> the heat is on. Uh, <laughs> but it was really saying it's not about that. It's about, you know, it's about in life. We have to find our satisfaction, our fulfillment in the things that we do behind the scenes. Right. Um, because I learned to pray by watching people pray. Uh, so I want to see people pray. Well, and you learn to serve by watching others serve. Right. A hundred percent. So you're, I mean, for me, you know, that the faith is most important. Um, but you know, we are an engaged Catholic family and believe heavily in that. Um, so the faith is most important for me. It's why we stay. Um, but I think that, you know, the service to others is so important. I, I'm sure that the public schools are doing um, service projects. Absolutely. Um, we have wonderful um, public schools that do a lot, but it's super consistent at St. John and often. Um, and I feel like the kids take that into their adult life and they're, they're lifelong servants. Yeah. Um, well, and so the motives behind it, right? Not not giving to get, giving right. to give, uh, and I think that's super important. So let's talk about Catholic. You got to back up just a tad here. <laughs> so let's talk about Catholic. Do you have to be Catholic to come to St. John's? No, no, you do not. Welcome. Okay, so tell us a little bit more about that. What does that mean? Like, because I've heard, oh, well, I'm not Catholic. Okay, great. All are welcome, right? Mm -hmm. But tell us what that really means for someone that isn't Catholic that maybe is like, boy, you know, I'm interested in that school, but I'm not Catholic. How do they get over that? How do you get over that? I don't think it's something you get over. Um, You just got to experience it. You got to come check out the school. You got to experience seeing these kids kneel down and pray in mass. You got to see them at their prayer service. You got to see them doing good deeds and kind things like that right there like you just feel a part of it it doesn't matter if you're catholic or not you just you walk in that school and you walk in those classrooms and you just feel it that's what it's about and the one amazing thing about our teachers is they're not boastful they're very humble they do so many amazing things each and every day each and every second in that school and they're not bragging about it and we need to do more of that because they are really awesome and our leadership is awesome, and there's so many great things. So they're humble, but we try to tell their story. <laughs> yes, that's why we're yeah, here. Right? Honestly, well, the right. goal because of today. They, they, I think that that. I mean, they really, I think, are just such humble, generous givers. Mm-hmm. Um, and you, 
when you're in the midst of teaching those kids and just giving of yourself, I mean, the mission is nothing without our teachers. Mm -hmm. Um, And I think that that's why it's been important for me is is to step in and say, what are we missing in the story? Why does the community not know? Well, I think in our Catholic faith, a lot of times we are kind of under the radar with what we do. Um, it is still a business. And I think that we then have to tell the story of what's going on in that school because they're they're doing their job every day. They're not going to, you know, put things out there on social media or market in a way. Um, they're just doing their job and they're doing it well. And so I think we need to tell the beauty of the story. Um, and I think that, you know, the way that we've executed our social marketing has been super important. It's just a relevant way to market these days. Um, but, you know, just going back to the faith, um, I think that most people have spiritu- spirituality in their life. And so I think when somebody comes into the school with a spirituality and they're not Catholic, I think to share just the fact that, you know, we can talk about Jesus and we can experience Jesus in the school. You don't have to be Catholic, but if you're spiritual and you have faith, you can learn and you grow can from learn that. And grow so, from it. it's a benefit. So that's that's perfect. That's a perfect answer to the question, really. Right? Is that it's 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 not about whether you're Catholic or not. It's about whether you uh, worship or believe in God. And so I, you know, I feel like okay, that's a great place for me to jump in because of not having any history in my childhood with with uh, having a relationship with God. When I got into um, my faith, it was in the Catholic church, because that's where I went to the men's retreat. That's when I met the Holy spirit. Like that's when I, I mean, was profound. I I cried for two days and on the men's retreat and it was extremely impactful. And so when I came out of there, I thought, wow, I want more of this. I want to keep going. I want to keep going. And so the journey was in the Catholic faith, but then it became interesting to me how, um, people in certain sectors, and I don't even know them all Catholic Presbyterian. I mean, you you know them you can yeah you can you can name them how they would judge one another and I I just was so I was so odd by that I thought well I just have one I just know one God I don't know what church you do it in I don't care what church you do it in do you worship a loving God and if so and you know a lot of times people people say to me outside of our company oh man you talk about Jesus a lot and you have the cross and and you said Merry Christmas and I'm like I'm not trying to please everyone. Mm-hmm. I'm okay with that, right? Mm-hmm. I know who I am and I know who I'm not. Mm-hmm. And and I believe that if you try to please everyone, you become no one to anyone. And and I think that it's just interesting to me how it becomes this judgmental thing that uh which is exactly what nothing should be, right? If we're living in God's word. And so tell me how again, I because I think this is an important point. What do you think? Do we know the stats on how many how many students are Catholic are inside the parish that come to St. John's School. I would guess it's, half. It's that are that are. I'm I'm sorry. I Cat, and the students at the school that are from a Catholic faith. Okay, more than half. It's it's probably eighty eighty five to maybe even ninety percent. And so, do you see that then? As as I mean, obviously, we want to increase tuition or increase. We don't want to increase tuition. Don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> we want to increase enrollment. enrollment. And and if the majority of those people are already there, then we have to reach outside of the Catholic faith, right? People that are faithful. Right, right. But it's important to us in the school so that that the parish families know. That the school is success. That the school is great. The school is successful. The school is Catholic. The school is academic. You know all those things that we have to get back into the parish. So more of our parish is in the school. Hundred that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, 100%. So and then when we when we get that, then of course, at the same time we have to be marketing to people outside because you know, whether you like it or not, I mean public school great. But we have the faith, and 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 I've talked to a couple people in in my career at here at St. John, but also at Powers Catholic, where I started, that it, it didn't matter to them the specific denomination. It mattered to them that it was faith based. Uh, okay, and amen. So mm-hmm. 
we got it. We got to get that message out there. So let's talk about the teachers because I want to share this with the audience that really didn't see it. When Michelle started on the teacher thing, I mean, she like honestly, I mean, you could see the passion in her face. You could see the tears in her eyes. Same with you, right? And and you guys are in there every day. I'm not. I he certainly is, and you and you ladies are. I'm not. Well, but you're in there a lot. I mean, you're working hand in hand with the teachers we, we often, are there right? More than. And so that's why that passion comes out. So this is, I, I think, an important statement. This is our leader, right? Mm -hmm. and, and so tell me the change that you've seen um, in the school since he's taken leadership, in the teachers, uh, in their, in their, uh, the experience that they're having underneath new leadership and how that trickles down to the children. Go ahead. I, I have my, I know what I would say. Okay, okay. Right. I want to so go I think okay. the most amazing thing about St. John's is our community. Mm -hmm. We're like family, the parents, the teachers, um, the parish. It's yeah. one big family, one big community. Mm -hmm. uh, we're all looking out for each other. We're close knit, we're tight. It, You feel it, you feel it when you walk in the school, you feel it when you walk in the church. Um, and like Father Ryan says um, at mass a lot, you know, it, our school is the future of the parish, right? Um, that's why I came back. I went to St. John's growing up, and I came back, and I wanted my children to go there. Um, my husband went there for a while, too, and uh, we made the decision to send him to St. John's because of of the feeling you get and what it does for you. And um, the teachers really are amazing. They do a great job. Um, they really care. They really enjoy the kids. They really love what they do, and God bless them mm -hmm. because they don't have it easy. Yeah. I, couldn't, uh, I could not imagine... <laughs> Right. teaching a classroom full of kids and especially boys for well, that matter shout so out to all teachers by the way oh, yeah, regardless absolutely. of where you teach right yeah this all isn't, teachers are amazing you know, and, and let's make it clear it's a, we're just trying to to promote a school that we love and mm -hmm. believe in it's not about which is better which is this mm -hmm. it's absolutely just, we just love our school we're passionate about our school uh, in fact we're grateful that we have so many good schools in the community because it drives the community mm -hmm. right i mean and and the overall growth is great for everyone. So tell me about, because you dodged that question, tell me about the change that you see yeah. in the teachers oh. underneath new leadership. Go ahead, Lisa. Okay. Well, <laughs> I, will, I will say that I am a firm believer that um, how, in, and I know you'll feel this way, how an organization performs and how an organization feels starts at the top. Um, and I feel like I mean, you can just feel the momentum in our school. I mean, like, let's be honest, you know, it's been a rough few years. Um, we've had some things that, you know, have definitely um, put some, you know, dampered spirits out there. There's been some negative chatter in the in the social aspect of things. Um, but when you get good leadership in there, and we have it in our parish, starting with Father Robert and Father Ryan, um, and then now we've got an amazing principal. Um, and I, you can, it, it was like you walked in the first day of school and you just knew that it was different. Um, you feel the momentum among the staff. I've watched it for eight years. Um, I caught fire when my son was in preschool, and I never wanted to leave that building. But then, you know, you you go through the ebbs and flows sure. of, of anything in life. Um, so I've seen the ups and the downs in the last eight years. Um, we are a different school than we were last last year. We are a different school than we were two or three years ago. Um, and I know that just from what you hear in the community within our own school, but external and in our parish community, they can feel that. And that's when you know that there is change happening and that good things are coming and that the momentum is swinging in the right direction. But it all starts at the top. So a great principal, you know, great parish leadership, and also parish and school working together. That has drastically changed this year. Um, and I think that that effort and that energy of the parish and the school working together for the same mission on the same road has made a world of dif difference. And, you know, I'm fortunate to um, be in the position where I'm a parent. I'm a volunteer. I'm not a staff member. Um, and so I can look at it from that perspective. Different lens. Different lens, right? And and kind of say, okay, you know, this this is good. 
Well, that was awesome. That was powerful. Mm-hmm. He, um, he's probably ready to go home now. He's like, let's just end it on that note. <laughs> that was good. But So then let's just swing right to the leader, right? So how were you able to come in? What were the things that you focused on to help facilitate this change? And we talked about change is not, it's not easy. It's not instant. It takes some time. Um, and the beautiful thing, you know, it, sometimes when we're doing the right thing, we're not getting rewarded for it. I say sometimes to our staff, like, you know, you're not hearing all the, the glory because you're doing the right thing. Right. And, and so many times we want that external reinforcement as opposed to just knowing you're doing the right thing. And when you're a leader, you got to be able to just know you're doing the right thing. And so, because I, I doubt everybody runs up to you every day and says, oh my gosh, you're the greatest principal I've ever seen in my life. Nope. Doesn't happen. Does it happen at all? Sometimes. It happens. Well, you're the greatest principal <laughs> it I've does ever happen. seen. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks, but, John. So, you know, I mean, so you and I talked real briefly, and let's go back to that conversation. You know, it was early on when you started. Uh, it was tough, right? Mm-hmm. And and we met, what's the name of that space again? The Gathering, the gathering space. space. Yeah, okay, the Gathering Space, that <laughs> space. And I don't, tough even, name. I don't remember exactly what was exchanged, but I basically said, well, God called you for this, mm-hmm. and you got this, and don't listen to the external, I think yep. was kind of along yep. the lines. Just do yep. what you believe in your heart. Mm-hmm. And so... Walk us through your first day. We don't need to know about every day, but just kind of what was your vision? Um, how are you feeling? What was your thought process to get buy-in again from everybody? Because I really think that is what was lacking, right? Um, as you mentioned, the, the turnover in leadership, we needed a strong leader. But no matter how strong of a leader you are, you have to first show it. You yes. have to first do it. Mm-hmm. You can't just say it. So walk us through that and, and kind of where you feel we are right now. I mean, it's it's been an amazing journey since coming here, uh, March of last year, and but being a parent and a parishioner of of, of you know of, of St. John, but being a parent of the school um, for three years, I think now, really getting to know the teachers, getting to know the staff, and and some of the families, uh, not all the families, obviously, just really our grade, um, but then again, I. I was at Powers, so I've been part of the Genesee County Catholic School system, conglomeration, whatever you want to call it, for 16 years. And so I've, I, I've taught so many parents <laughs> – taught parents. I've taught so many well, students. We, we, we need to be taught too, so that's okay. <laughs> Teach us, brother. <laughs> I've taught so many students from St. John uh, coming, coming through Powers, uh, and, and because of my you know, being a part of the parish, I, I knew – I knew the parish and I knew the people and and so but hearing the negative talk go on and some of the issues that were happening in the school just in our the short 3 years that we've been a parents in the school um and knowing what the 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 teachers were going through um on that side of things too when I got here when when father called me to to take over um my number one goal was to build up the teachers because mm-hmm. not change them right build empower them, them empower them because what they were doing in the classroom was awesome and and I can go just to one one example my daughter who she struggled in kindergarten she's one of the younger kids and and working with with Mrs. Boyle and then first grade she was she was a little bit behind reading working with Mrs. Salzano and then second grade Mrs. Cicillo just she just they kept chipping away chipping away and and the growth was starting to happen not just academically not just academically but spiritually and and Addie wanting to know about Jesus on the cross and questions about different things in in the in the church when we got there. So, so she's an example. She's an example of of me seeing the hard work that the teachers put into um, every day. And so I wanted number one back in March to say, "All right, you guys are doing awesome, and we're going to let everyone know that this is a great group, and you guys are working hard every day." The, the teachers give up so much time. They don't get they do they do not get the pay that, that they deserve. But they are working. They're, they're, we have a lot of teachers that get there at seven thirty, seven o'clock. Some of them, um, and they're they're there till five, six o'clock. And I think once they put their kids to bed, I know they're 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 emailing, they're lesson planning. I'm getting emails sometimes at eleven, twelve, one o'clock in the morning. So we we have dedicated 
teachers and I, I need my parents, I need the parents of our school to know that. Yeah. And so that, that, that was my, that was my number one goal. I don't remember all of your question because I got rambling <laughs> well, I, again. I, just, but. I mean, honestly, that was like, I, I kind of put myself in your shoes. Like, okay, I know there's, look, everybody wants to run away from, mm-hmm. you know, the scary stuff, but the truth is the truth, right? Yeah. And so you've mentioned it. There were some things that were happening. They weren't bad things. They were just, they were just changes that needed yeah. changes. They should happen at any school. And, and right. They do happen at any school. We're just talking about them, there, right? There's, a, there's an ebb and flow of teachers and, and we all have to understand that the school is going to exist, but. Teachers, you know, we can get behind a teacher as as parents, but they might move on to another school or they might be asked to leave because it's not necessarily working out. So, but we have to, as parents, have faith in the leadership, in the direction. So that's, so, so, I mean, I'll just jump in here, right? Because to me, there's so many parallels in in life, right? So I just sat with, um, well, I just introduced you guys to Tom Keach, right? New new, um, person that we brought on to really help, help, uh, support the agents and develop the business and take us to the next level. And I sat down with two of the senior agents uh, the day before we announced them. And I said, hey, here's what's going on. I wanted you guys to know about it. Um, and one of them said, I trust you, Mer- I trust you, man. I'm behind you. Do your th-. I mean, they've been here, you know, eight, nine years. So that's already there. But it's that reassurement that right. I don't I appreciate you telling me, but I don't need to know because I trust you. Right. And I think that's what's really important. Uh, but to be but again, these are eight, nine year guys. Right. Mm-hmm. So for you now being the new leader coming in, I right. think, you know, it takes that that plan. But then that consistent action, because I'm sure you got pushed back right away. <laughs> Judging yes. by that face, he still gets well, pushed back. Yeah, and I will say <laughs> that um, he's super—he's been super consistent. I will say that, um, and just the—I I really hope that more of our families and more of our parents really start to witness that. I mean, Michelle and I are just—I mean, we're a little bit strange. I mean, we we, <laughs> we see and hear th- things more than the average, you know, person that's n- not as involved as you know PSA and and foundation members and whatnot Um, but what I know is that even myself as a parent and I know that Andrew knows this just because you know we've had a lot of conversation about this in the foundation is that um, I had some issues and and I'm somebody who's completely committed to the school I mean I often say about Michelle is, is like the school would be burning down and Michelle Pagnani would still be in it. Like, like she's, I know she she's, was, I right. She is, she is in and I, and as way. am I, but I have had some issues. I mean, my son had, um, you know, like Addie, had some issues and needed a program um, that we didn't have at St. John, that what I was seeing at least, um, that would grab his um, issue do an intervention and actually get him to the level at which he needed to be. Um, we've worked really hard to build the resource program at um, at St. John um, to grab those kids that um, need a little bit more help, and it's been fantastic. But there were moments where I thought, I don't know that this is the school for him. Like, I love the faith. I don't want to leave. I love the community. I'm deeply involved with, you know, the service aspect. But, like, is this the right place for him for his needs? And I will tell you that... I had, we worked really hard for that, but I've had a few things in my mind this year and exactly what you said, I was like, he's got it. Like, I trust that he's got it. Like anything that's in my head, he's got it. He's He sees what I see and he will handle it. And I think that as the parent community, like we have to trust that we don't always have to- um, Control. Well, control, but also to run. Like, what are, what, why run? Like, know that your leadership is there for a reason uh, and that they're gonna solve any Well, the leadership is there now. Right, yes. <laughs> right, right. But it's probably the first time in three years that I have felt like, I don't need to send that email. Like, he's got it. Like. Well, and, and, and I agree. And then I also think, though, a good leader, though, will take feedback, right? Oh, I mean, yeah, I know absolutely. people, I, yeah. I have people in my life that will check me, right? Mm-hmm. That will say, hey, um, I know who you are, and I don't think this aligns with it. And maybe you didn't mean it, and maybe you did, but I'm checking you. And, and I don't get mad. I go, ooh, 
thank you for loving me enough to do that, mm-hmm. right? And so one of those things to bring that to somebody and to have a leader that will embrace that right. is huge as well. So let's let's talk about some something else that's happening that's I think very interesting is there's been some folks that have, you know, chose a different direction that are now coming back. Yeah. And I think uh, mm-hmm. it, that speaks volumes. Right. Um, and there are some that are that are gone and maybe won't come back. And that, that I mean, it's it's beautiful, too. Right. It's not about that. But I think that if this is where you want to be and you want that faith foundation, but maybe because of the some of the trials and, and turbulations that we went through, we are back and stronger than ever, I think, is is really the point in me saying that. Right. Mm-hmm. So tell us about, you know, look, we spent a lot of time on leadership. We've we've declared that you're doing a great job. We're thankful for you. We're grateful for you. Quite honestly, I mean, truly, you know, I I, I speak for many many people. When you were intern, everyone wanted you to be the full time. Like mm-hmm. and maybe you don't know that, but everyone was saying, "I hope they hire him full time. I hope they hire him full time. I hope they hire him full time," and and they did. And praise the Lord. Um, but t- let's talk about some of the things that we're doing in the community outside of just the children, right? But as a whole, as a, I love that what you said earlier. I uh, used the word campus, I believe. Like okay. it is, right? It's that yeah. whole thing that is in the community, the school and the church together. So, I mean, obviously we do the Apple Fest, which is a huge fundraiser. So many people, though, look at that and go, oh, they're selling beer to make money. You know what I mean? And, and so let's just go right at that. I mean, what's the point behind doing all of these fundraisers? What are we doing with them, with the money? Okay, so I'll speak up on this one um, because we have the St. John School auction coming up yes. on February 22nd, okay? And this is the school's biggest fundraiser. It's huge. It's really our only fundraiser. Um, and as you guys know, we're not publicly funded. Um, we rely on tuition and the parish to help support our school and keep and it growing way, and thriving. by the way, the tuition isn't like super yeah. crazy. No, it's very reasonable. <laughs> yeah. Right. Very reasonable. Okay. It's cost to educate a kid is right around 8000 so... And we're well under that. Yes. Well under that. So, well, what is tuition? People might want to know. It's. Go ahead. <laughs> well, I can't say for next year for 2020, sure, 2021, sure. but we're we're right four thousand ish for for. Uh, uh, the Catholic rate and then non-Catholic is right around 5,000. Okay. All right, cool. So go ahead, finish. I didn't mean to interrupt, but hey, uh, um, give us a shout. We'd love to embrace your family, right? Yes, absolutely. Come tour the school. Check it out. I mean, I'm telling you, you guys, it's it's all about the feeling. It's an awesome place. And um, we have an opportunity to come up to uh, coming up to raise money for our school. And so, we are so So that so date's going to come and go, but why do we do it? Why do we do it? Yes. Because we believe, because we have faith, because we know that it's a good investment. Um, because of, I mean, what you see every day, what you see in mass, what you see at the school, um, what your kid comes home and tells you and gets excited about. Like, it's all about that. Like, waking up every day and those kids going to school, and yes, school's sometimes boring and it's not that fun, but you know what? <laughs> I mean, they do enjoy it. There's things they come home and they are excited to tell you about. And that's what it's all about, creating those memories. And it not only creates memories for your kids, but your your families are really involved. The parents at St. John's really are amazing. The homeroom moms 100%. that bring Jen Wentworth. <laughs> She's for like example. a forever homeroom mom. mom. Yeah. Yes. Our homeroom moms, they help plan the classroom parties. They sometimes help plan field trips. They make these awesome auction projects like... So many people want to help of parent and contribute. Yeah, There's a I, lot of parent involvement. And all the parents like just really enjoy that. And you see it in the school. And, you know, there is actually research that when the parents are involved inside the school, it really makes a difference in their success. And um, that's one great thing is the community. And that's why we want more people to come and check it out. That's why we want to raise more money for the school. We want to help it grow and and thrive because we believe and we care. And uh, we want to make an impact and make a difference. You know, I think one of the, for me, again, you know, not, not having this, not going on this journey in my youth and my adolescence until I was, you know, 40 years old. Um, but I just love driving the kids to school. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like just the act of that. I mean, you think about, I mean, I went to the bus stop. I got my butt beat a lot at the bus stop. <laughs> I did. And then, and then I also learned how to stick up for myself at the bus stop. But you know, when I drive the kids to school, just that, just that little 10 minutes is so powerful, yeah. you know, and, and when we used to drop off in the, in the upper 
lot, I guess you would say. I would always pull over in front of the church and I'd say a little prayer. And I, and I and, I, and the reason I want to share this story is because it's the consistency of what we're doing. It's the mm-hmm. unseen that is that is at work as opposed mm-hmm. to, you know, d- doing a prayer and needing my kids to sit there perfectly and behave perfectly and say and say, you know what I mean? Like so every day I pull over, I say this prayer. Half the time now they're one of them are I don't think Usually half the time they're listening. Most of the time they're slapping each other's hands, right? Because I reach back and try to hold their hands. And there's all that pushback. And then there's the day that I forget to pull over. And they say, Dad, stop. You forgot to pray. So this is what I mean by the unseen works that we're doing every single day, doing Mm -hmm. the right things, doing the things that we don't need to be rewarded for. They have a big impact on the kids. Mm -hmm. Uh, And so I love that drive to school. I don't pick them up from school. I take them to school. Jen picks them up. But just, I mean, that's 10 minutes that you're spending with them that how was school or what is on the docket today at school. Uh, You know, just having those conversations. and, And honestly, my kids love going. I don't ever get pushback from the kids to go to school. Now yeah, they're tired and they're cranky mm-hmm. and whatever, yeah. right? But it's never like, I don't want to go to school today. And honestly, when there was turmoil, because I've been there for, you know, Christian's 20 years old now. Mm-hmm. Um, in fact, Christian, was Rocco in when you were in eighth grade? Uh, I think one year, yeah. Yeah, so Rocco was um, preschool or pre-K. I don't know. There's so many grades. I can't figure them all out. <laughs> I just knew one through one through 12. And and Christian, so I've been there a long time. And when there's that turmoil, my biggest thing was, are the kids happy? Mm-hmm. Right? Their grades, this and that. And, and, and I know that's important to people, as it should be. Uh, but I also know I barely graduated high school and I'm doing pretty good, right? Because I'm passionate about people. Uh, and, and praise the Lord, I now have that faith foundation. But I just want to make sure they're happy. Mm-hmm. I think happiness is so overlooked. I also think that what you said about consistency is so important. I mean, we're so consistent in, uh, you know, we recently did a marketing brochure um, and we're able to kind of examine those top 15 or 16 things. And I wish I had it. I know. Had I known, right? Had I known. um, I'll get you a copy. Uh, You can can pass it out. There you go. There you Um, go. But I think that when we were putting that together um, and you looked at each one of those, I mean, I think a few years ago we did one, there was 12, like the 12 reasons why to attend St. John's School. Um, And I think this year we had 16 or 17 things. And, And I will tell you that when you, when I read those 16 things, I'm like, every single one of those is a consistent point. I mean, starting with, you know, that the faith, the service, the the staff, the um, academics, the technology. I mean, there were so many things that I'm like, there's such consistency and such truth in every single one of these points um, that it's it would be almost hard to um, to pick one as the top because they're all such consistent, important, you know, things. But yeah, we'll get you a copy of that. Yeah, give me a copy of that. Do you have something you, you want to share? You did. You, your, in your initial question for this segment was what the the Apple Fest mm-hmm. and, and the school the school relies heavily on the auction. Mm-hmm. Um, it it is it's a lifeline and it's it shows us how much you know the school does mean to our community. But then the Apple Fest for the parish is is essential because of all the ministries that the parish because the school is a huge part of the ministry of the, of the of the parish right right as father ryan said the mm-hmm. life of the the life of the parish depends, on, depends the on the 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 future of the school so so that but we have outreach we have our youth ministry we have our our, our religious ed program so so when people come to our campus in in september they're helping us keep those ministries going as well as the school, but I mean, just St. John is, is what we do is very important. And it's not just selling beer, you know, on Thursday, Friday night, whatever, but it's going to help. It's going to help. Yeah. Bigger picture. And I think that also, you know, those things, uh, yes, you know, you pay tuition if you, if you um, go to St. John's school, but when, when we do things that raises money for the parish, all are welcome to join for free those ministries, um, and that is a com- you know we are we St. John em- the parish embraces the community, and those fundraisers are important because they essentially keep those ministries running. And it's a way for our community to get together and have fun and be involved. Um, whenever there is a school or parish event, it's a great time to just be together and have fun. It's not, 
You know, it's doing service, but it's making connections and networking and meeting other people and having fun. And, you know, your kids are playing, your kids are playing together and creating memories. And, um, you know, you're taking pictures and you, you remember that you again, it's a feeling you get when and, and it's great to be a part of. Well, it's been great to be a part of this. I appreciate you, appreciate you guys so much. Um, even even I had to drag Lisa in a little bit, but it's all good because you brought, screaming. you brought a lot of great things to the table. Yes, thank you. Um, and, and to be continued, and I think let's just leave the people with, like, the doors are always open, right? And uh, go ahead. When's the, when's the open house? Our, yes, our open o- house. Our open house, open enrollment, uh, getting ready for next year, March 12th. It's a Thursday night from 5 until 7 o'clock. Come and see the school. We're going to have um, uh, our STEAM teacher, science, technology, engineering, art. Our math. kids love that class, by the way. Mm-hmm. Tours. The, yeah, yeah she's going to be setting up uh, little STEAM activities around the school. We're, we're trying to make it. It's not just come into the school, come and see this teacher, whatever, but we're trying to make sure. it an event. So March 12th, 5 to 7, um, interested in our school, come check us out. But you can call us anytime, Monday yeah. through Friday, and come come and see uh, come, come and see the school. We can and, tour you and, around. And, and, and that if you know stuff. any of us in the community, reach out. I mean, mm-hmm. very happy to share openly, uh, you know, the, the good and the bad, but I'll tell you what, there's not much bad... In fact, there isn't any anymore. I mean, really, I mean, there's been a lot of great change. I mean, I always feel like that. I mean, I saw Michelle Post said something about the auction last night. I mean, the sponsors, I mean, they're all community businesses, and they give so generously Mm -hmm. of their, not only their time a lot of the time, but their money, their their hard-earned money. I mean, we have everyone from, you know, school families to non-school families. I'm, I'm, you know. Well, let's talk about some of those sponsors. No, I'm just Uh, kidding. Well, I mean. (laughs) But really, I don't know them all, or I rattle them off. But you know, the the fact that the community gets behind the school, even if you don't have students in the school, I mean, there's plenty of people on that auction sponsor list, and that do um, Apple Fest as well. But really, the school auction because it's it's um it's school based, you know, and 100 percent of that money goes goes right back to the school to provide things like the school's most immediate needs. Yeah. So um, our sponsors are awesome. I'm so thankful for them. And the we, great we news will is post them in there's, this more post spons- as well. there's more sponsors coming in. Um, I'm constantly getting emails and phone calls. So, um, so our sponsors are amazing. And it really shows a testament of the belief uh, of our leadership um, and the faith that our uh, parents have in the school. So thank you from the bottom of our hearts. It truly is making a huge difference. Um, whether you can attend, sponsor, donate, or volunteer, it's going to make an impact Time, and make a treasures. difference. Time, talent, or treasure. So we need you, but thank you for what you're doing. We appreciate each and every one of you. All right. Well, with that, Andrew Schmidt, Michelle Pignani, Lisa Palmer, John Wentworth, Thoroughbred Podcast. Check us out on, I don't even know where you go, SoundCloud, <laughs> iTunes, YouTube, Flip Flop, <laughs> Drip Drop, wherever. You guys know where to go. Find us. Um, share this. We're not on TikTok. We're not, <laughs> we're not dropping like that. Please no. <laughs> but we appreciate you tuning in uh, to the Thoroughbred Podcast. And honestly, guys, thank you for, thank you for all of your Thanks, hard Jen. work. I, I always use this term hard heart work, right? Because anybody yes. can work hard, but are you working from your heart? And uh, I know you guys are. So Michelle, thank you so much for all you thank do. Thank you for having Lisa, us. Lisa, thank you for all you do. I appreciate you guys. You're going to look right at that camera. Just, I'm just ribbing her a little bit. All right, guys. Thank you so much. Have a blessed day. We out. You're listening to the Thoroughbred Podcast, an elite business leadership podcast.